Are you looking for big Korean style half bridge power on a budget? Well, let's check out Team Pie here, which is a company direct from China. You can order your goodies, including the 7,500 watt amp. Some of the American companies here have bought these and rebranded them. Jones Subwoofer Solutions is one, and he lists his 7500.1 as 899. You can check the link in the video description for his website and also his dyno test. But you also have a link below for Team Pie where you can order this amplifier direct. You have all kind of options for having it screen with your name on it or whatever. TeamPieAudio.com. Now, when I first got this amp in, I noticed a very striking similarity to the Vital Power VP700.1 that I tested previously. And it looks like this Team Pie 7500.1 is a pretty close clone. We will check the guts later to see how close they are. But for now, let's get this thing unboxed. This amplifier is huge and they packed it well. I really like the box, really thick cardboard and some really thick padding on each end. So it arrived fine with no problems. Let's get it unwrapped and see what's inside. Here you can see the amp. This is a raw design, just an anodized black finish. It does not have any kind of logos or anything on it. Decided to go that route. Here is a Cat5 style bass remote cable. And you get Allen's keys and also Allen's screws. I don't know why he gave those up. And here is the voltage and temp and everything else included on this bass remote. This is actually a really nice bass remote. The only limitation I've seen, and I'll talk about it later, is it only shows Celsius for the temperature, which that's what they use virtually everywhere else except for the U.S. But you can see, um, yeah, it's metal and everything. It looks pretty good. Let's talk about the ratings. At 4 ohms, it's rated 2600. At 2 ohms, 4800 and one ohm 7,500 watts, all at 14.4 volts. On one end of the amp, we have the RCAs for inputs and outputs. Those are Tiffany style, power and protect LEDs, gain control from 0.2 to 6 volts, subsonic from 10 hertz to 50 hertz, bass boost from 0 to 9 dB, as well as the remote connection for the bass knob, low pass filter from 250 hertz down to 35 hertz, as well as a phase from 0 to 180, a clip limit button for off and on, output master or slave, as well as that RCA and the speaker outputs, which are approximately eight gauge. On the other side, you have the triple one alt inputs, as well as remote power out and remote power in. That way you can daisy chain multiples of these amplifiers if you'd like. Very beefy here. Again, 7,500 watt amp, you're gonna need the juice to supply. Please take note of how to hook these up. Make sure you hook it up the right way. The uh, power terminals and ground terminals there are a little different than normal. As far as the weight, this thing is 41 pounds or 18.5 kilograms. Dimensions 33.5 by 12 inches by 3 inches, which is exactly the same as the vital power that we've shown before. Now for the amp dyno test, let's talk about the default settings. We have the amplifier gain match to the head unit with 9 dB overlap using DD1+. Plus. Subsonic filter is set to the minimum setting. Low pass filter is set to the maximum, which is 250 hertz. Bass boost is set to minimum. Phase is set to zero. And of course, it's set in the master mode because we're testing one single amplifier here. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch. Smash me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. Something to note here, the amp is hooked up using the triple one alt inputs. I do have dual inputs on one of the terminals. And I'm measuring just one of the three. And I've got a video which I'll link in the video description that shows why this is accurate for this particular test. Also, for those who haven't seen these videos before, the amp dyno displays three things, the wattage output, the ohm load, and the resulting voltage for the test. First up, we're gonna try the four ohm test. The amp is rated 2600 watts at 14.4 volts. 
Start up the test here, certified, and you can see it stopped at 1994 and then jumped to 2105 at 14.83. So a little shy of that rated power. Uh, the rated power could be at clipping, so let's check that out. The uncertified test takes us up to clipping, and we get, it's still counting. <laughs> check it out, 28.54 at 14.6. So we do meet the rating at the uncertified test at clipping. So in my book, since this amp is so big and it's really going to be used for a base, you're not going to tell when 1% distortion hits. You're going to tell when clipping hits. So... This is a pass in my book. Dynamic power, again, over 2,800 watts, 2,838. Efficiency at 4 ohms, 87%. That's what we like to see. Very good. All right, next we'll try 2 ohms. Amp is rated 4,800 watts at 14.4. Certified test first. Takes us to 1% distortion and 4,287. But did you notice, again, it jumped from 3,900 watts-ish up to 4,287 there at the end of the test. Uncertified up to clipping. Again, this is the one we're gonna use to verify whether the amp can do its power rate at 4,800, and yes, easily 5,500 watts. Actually, almost 5,600, 5,590 at 14.46. Now we'll try the dynamic burst, sending a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp. Again, we have strong voltage here because we're using our lithium LTO bank. Uh, ending at 14.56, we get 54.72. What about the efficiency? Measured a little bit lower here at 2 ohm, 74%. Still okay. Now 1 ohm amp is rated 7,500 watts at 14.4 volts. And we're going to set the clip limit to the off position for this test. Here we go. Can we get that 7,500 watts? Oh yes, 81.72 at 14.46. Impressive, even though it wasn't so much so at 4 ohms and 2 ohms because it had to get to the uncertified mode. What does it do uncertified up to clipping? 84.32, 14.49. So we're close to that 14.4 and we're getting almost 1,000 watts over the rated power. Dynamic burst, 1 ohm, 40 hertz. We are pushing 10K, friends. 96.61, is it getting higher? 96.61 at 14 and a half volts. Now check out the efficiency that I measured here. 88% at one ohms. Now that is what I'm talking about. Did I just say one ohms? I meant one ohm. Now let's push in this clip limit button to the ohm position and try the test again at one ohm. And you can see, didn't quite get as much power. 76.84. 14.41. I will reset the dyno for the uncertified test. Takes us up to the clipping point, and I can't talk today. Sorry about that. Here we go. 84.61. 14.42. So pushing a thousand watts more than the rated power. Dynamic. Let's send that pulse tone. Oh yeah. 95.92. Keeps keeps pulsing when getting higher i think that's what that's what we're going to get 95 92 at 14.59 and efficiency with the button pushed in was wow it's a lot less 68 percent. maybe leave that button unpushed or not pushed in this may be the first amp i've ever seen that did not meet rated at one percent distortion at four ohms or two ohms but then blew it out of the water at one ohm but at clipping again this amp is huge this is a spl amp as long as it meets rated and click, clipping i'm good Let's talk about what's inside. 16 switches and sounds for you know what. Let's pull the bottom panel off and see what it looks like. Yes, it looks a lot like the Vital Power, just like we thought. You can see the amplifier is huge. Again, 33 inches long, has six different toroidal transformers, in addition to uh, additional output chokes there. 25 volt, 4700 microfarad for the power supply filtering. And the rail caps, 1800 microfarads, 200 volts, TT Beacon. <laughs> and here is the button that enables or disables the clip um, function. So I would just recommend leaving that off. Now I did notice that some of the windings on the chokes were a little loose and I asked some of the technicians about this and they said, yeah, those should be tight. I asked TeamPi about it and they said they're ensuring that future models 
are going to be wound tighter. Same thing on the transformers here. You can see we got a little bit of looseness going on here with some of the windings. But again, they have uh, promised that the newer models are going to take pay more attention to that and make sure they're nice and tight. Now, you may not notice by this picture here, but it was hard to get both these amps stacked on top of each other. And it doesn't look that big compared to me, but I'm a big dude. So the amp is big and it's heavy at over 40 pounds. We'll see some demos from some real world situations of these amps being installed in cars. Right now we're going to talk about the pros and cons, things I like and things I think could be better. There's a lot of pros on this amp. Rated power plus at clipping, triple 10 inputs. It is linkable if 7,500 watts is not enough. Has active cooling with fans, clip limit button, which I wouldn't use. Tiffany RCAs, which are very nice. This reasonable price, check with teampiaudio.com. Efficiency was very good. Could be better. It's big and heavy, of course. It is a half bridge. Loud fans, 8-gauge speaker outputs, maybe they could be 4. The generic design, which is a copy, which again, it works okay, so that's really not a big deal. Support and logistics, you're getting it straight from China, so that could be a problem. Takes power to make power, so make sure you have the electrical system to be able to support an amplifier this big if you get this. Otherwise, you're going to be very unhappy to the fact that you're going to either damage the amp or you're going to damage your electrical system. So there you have it, the Team Pi 7500. Make sure you stick around till after here the end credits because I'm going to show some more tests. But for right now, Big D, I'm out of here. Team Pi 7500. Let's try 0.8. It's not rated anything less than one ohm. 1% THD, 40 hertz. Wow, 8,736 watts right at 14.4. Four. Uncertified takes us up to clipping, again, 0. 0.8. This is a rather brutal test on the amp. Eighty-six. 48, that's interesting, it's a little bit less at 14.5. Now let's try the dynamic test. Reset the clamp. All right, 40 hertz, dynamic, 0.8. 11. 1,694, almost 11,700 watts. Here we go, slow motion. Tried to lose my phone. <laughs> what?